Welcome back to Michelle Holden Art, and I hope you've been enjoying this mini-series of exploring multiples, um, being more productive, um, using that approach of creating 16, uh, starting with black and white marks, stencils, various um, layers, simple layers, and then going forward, picking uh, a very simple palette or monochromatic palette, and then separating them, and then arriving at uh, four, I look at it as four different choices. Uh, part two, if you didn't catch it, you can watch it as it is, of course, the video before this. And I just chose these. Um, after I did the black and white, I added just some peach, just some blues, because I know I want to explore further with blue and maybe a neutral. And then I said in my video, uh, with the peach, it might become more blue. Uh, it might become neutral with some blue accents or highlights. So then I went and chose four of them. I took them apart and then I put them back together because I wanted to preserve the edges. And I used turquoise, Naples yellow, titani unbleached titanium, and yellow oxide, one of my favorite colors. And keeping the color palette very simple. And these are the results of more layers going more deeply in a specific color. So this is part four and it will continue. And I haven't decided if I want to do four more in this color palette or do each group of four. So I'll have four to explore different colors and different color palettes. So if I really like this, I think I'll do another group of four and then see what happens. So welcome. If you are new to this channel, this is where I um, have developed my intuitive art journaling practice to discover my true art one layer at a time, and so can you. And that's where we're going. So let's get started. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to just uh, show you briefly uh, probably too many little scrap pieces, but as you've seen my previous videos, I only choose a few. I'm echoing the same blues in the collage, and that's where when you have leftover paint, you can then use that to create some more collage pieces. And in my uh, new first offer, other than my YouTube channel, I will be showing you just some starts um, and how to get started with your own intuitive art journaling practice. So I'm going to stop my narration so you can just watch and, and maybe follow along, create along. And so let's go. I forgot to mention that, um, It is also very important when you're coming back to a series of work to use your intuitive art uh, self-reflection guide that I offer for free when you sign up. I also have uh, art prompts that you can get for free and more free resources will be coming. So, yes, let's get started, shall we? So now... I like to, at this stage, um, handle each one, which is a five inch by seven inch, and I did make 16 of them. And I've selected collage that I created on my jelly plate printer uh, with yellow oxide, so that's where the colors go so well. And I didn't want that orange one up at the top left, as you see, it's just a little too it's just a little too bright, and I'm really thinking of balancing the um, 
I guess the the warm yellow oxide with the blue and with the neutral. So that's what I'm doing and I'm just letting it develop um, intuitively. As you can see, I hold a piece of collage uh, that I usually break up into three different sizes when I'm handling a strip like this. And if it feels good, then that's the layer that I'll deal with at that time. Now, um, things catch my eye when uh, they're just sort of resting in between uh, phases or stages. So I love the round circle and that little piece of scrap. This is sort of just a scrap piece of peach that I'm thinking that's over there on the left, but I don't really end up using it. I'm really loving the complementary colors of this blue, which is a warm blue. And as you can see, I'm this piece is just calling for more uh, because that neutral just sort of breaks it up in half. I'm really liking that effect. So then you might grab different have different blues in one little pile, your neutrals, and I've done that in the past as well. And sometimes it's really good to set up everything, as you can see, um, in the sequence as you sort of plan. It may not turn out that way, but at least you're, you're planning so you can be in a really good intuitive flow once you start. I'm using the heavy gloss, um, what do we uh, heavy gloss medium, and it's better. Um, it has less water, so I notice when I use that, there's less rippling. This is a piece of coffee filter paper, and um, later on, when I get into my um, my other course that I'm working up to, I will show you and demonstrate many different types of papers, especially the transparent papers, for you to um, explore. So these are water-soluble pastels, and I noticed I just needed a little more of that peach, peachy color, and I chose to use a little bit of the yellow and a little bit of the pink which I think is just enough for this piece. Okay, so that's one layer of more collage on each one plus a little glazing. And these are water-soluble pastels, and they're, they're very cool. They're very similar than the card, card uh, um, these. Let me just pronounce that correctly. The Neo Color um, Caron Dash. And let's see what we have in here. Might be closer. I also use the ink tints, which might also have something really cool. And I, I used to, I have not done it in a while, is start to activate, uh, instead of using the pencil line like I do at the very, very beginning, the very first mark, using these is a really cool approach as well. I don't want to go too pink. I'm just thinking of the combining, which is very similar, like I thought. But the Cardon, the, the Caron Dash has a closer blue where the water soluble pastels, let's see what this one is Prussian blue. Whoa, that's really intense when I'm looking for a warmer or towards more turquoise. Okay, 
Okay. That's really nice. So that's sort of a glaze, well, it's not sort of, it is a glazing approach, but since these are water soluble, it's probably not the best. I was just sort of testing. And I will make a glaze, see it just wipes right off, with um, ink today. So I'm going to try that. Thank you for my newest comment and subscriber. Uh, pardon me if I don't remember your name. You were suggesting, have I used ink or acrylic inks with a medium? Well, and I realize, you know what? I've not tried that before. So why not give it a try? Just as a glazing kind of, uh, and I don't know if I need the medium, but what I'm going to do, um, and I'll just move these down so you can watch what I'm doing, is I'm going to combine, uh, one ink was too blue, and of course the other is too green. So I'm going to combine it and see, and you don't need much for the little bit of very transparent layering, uh, glazing that I'm planning on doing. Okay, so I'm going to add a little water. I'm going to move these. I do not want them splashed on. And for a controlled um, water, I like to use these science kind of dippers oh, without squirting them, of course. And that's all you need. So it could use a little more green. Okay, so I'm liking that. Let's see what kind of effect. And I am going to use um, a square brush to have more control over my glazes. And why am I doing glazing at this point? I want to sort of push, uh, say, this section back and Make it more blue, see what happens. I may or may not like it. But I'm gonna do that for a section. And then, as I've mentioned in the previous video, this is where our intuitive shapes start showing up. Rather than using paint, so let's see. Wow, I really like that. Now, okay, so what I like to do as well is a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, which will cause a texture of bubbling. As you can see, and then I'm not even going to touch it or use the dryer. I'm just going to let that dry, and it should be very quick. very transparent layering. This is really what I was hoping for. You might need two squirts just to get enough of the alcohol to break up the water. And sometimes it goes back, but not completely. See, and that layer is almost dry.
So if you put too much on, you can also lift it. Sometimes I use paper and sometimes I use a uh, paper towel. So let's just see. That's very interesting. It's very, very light. Let's do. Yes, it's almost like a, like a shadow. There's a very thin shape or thin area. It's going to add an interesting effect to this little series. And I'm so liking, I'm doing, trying something new. Notice I'm also putting it where the blue already is. I just don't want to. Oh, I did cover some of the neutral too, didn't I? Okay, I'm gonna try drips this time. I just don't want them to go too far. Yeah, I'm just letting that sit there for a minute. There's already a coating, so I don't, I don't think I want it that far down. And that's all. I'm also going to spray that one. I like it broken up better and I might even do one more. Okay. And it's also getting in the ink. Now, if I put a lid on that, that'll last a few days and I won't feel pressure to use it. Uh, but if I have to, uh, what a great additional layer on some collage that's already blue or anything. So we'll see how that goes. So let's take a look at these. Okay. So far... There's a, there's sort of a balance of neutral and blue. And this can cause some, I don't know, they're vying for uh, dominance, I guess you want to say. This piece here is the uh, gestural collage that will be a big part of the offer that's coming out. And it is the one of the best ways to explore your mark making. So I think I'm just gonna dry these now and see what we do next. And what I like to do, so this is, this is, and I'll say part four, the final stage. Um, for these types of explore, exploratory piece, uh, abstract series, exploring some color, I really like to uh, um, not go so far to end up overpainting them. So you still want to leave some of that rawness and the very early pencil lines or um, that's what those are there or your China marker. And I usually come in with some more line. So I don't know at this point how far I want to take them. With collage, I mean. Loving the transparency of that. softens it, but I 
I sort of like that line.
Okay. So let's see what we have. And I, I'm coming to the point where when you put a piece down and you, you get lots of uh uh, nose, nose, it means it's getting really close to the end. Now, that's what I needed right there. I love taking, I like to find specific, I guess, novels or old novels with larger text, and then you can cut them out and. Right. Okay, I think there's enough paint, there's enough collage. I know I have text on the one. I might find something later, but this is as far as I'm going to go for part four until I decide I really think I need to do another four with the same the same sequences um, and do it fairly soon while the flow of these four are still you know in the foreground of my of my uh, or fresh in my thinking even though it isn't thinking but you know what I mean so because I've gotten lots of no's now I know it's time to add my favorite line. I'm going to go with gold here. And I'm just going to echo the same kinds of marks that I love. But not all over. There's a line here. I'll pick that energy up from it or the direction. I love the effect of line and drawing. So this right away, this with this anomaly sphere, I thought of orbit or something in or along those lines. I like the transparent peach layer, so I'm gonna see if I can use a little glaze, or I will use the same um, water pastels, water soluble pastels that I used. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit more there. So that's really yellow, so it needs some pink. And I might use a more orangey one instead, because I just re remembered that's what I did. Now, I've not added white, just to change the value a bit. Hmm, I'm liking that. So it's making, see how this goes across, oh, this goes across, up, catches your eye, and you're coming down. Okay. I may or may not do a sprinkle, but I know I would do it right in this area. Okay, that's done. That's done. So this is like a quick 
maybe a not an accurate glazing layer. I'm sure I could probably do better with pre-mixing and getting the exact really nice peachy feeling. I notice I also have some of this. I may or may not use that. And notice I don't want to go up here where that piece of collage is because I want that line here to, to remain invisible or hidden. So I'm going to soften that. And at least it's showing me where I want to put it. See, there's that peachiness. And I think I most likely will use the unbleached titanium and come in with some of that. There's some here, some here. I think I want a little bit more. So why am I adding this color? Because it's the opposite of blue, or this particular blue, it's an orange, and it'll just make, in the proper ratio, the blue be more blue. And I'm directing the eye down. Okay, so I think it's splash time, so I like to use black, and sometimes I really like to use raw umber, depending on what my dark is. So I'll zoom in. That's it. So I'm pretty much uh, satisfied with these. I know the peach will really make certain blues pop and I might, you might you want to go in for some adjustments. I'm noticing that even a little bit of lighter blue in amongst the blue, so it doesn't interfere with the composition, might be a great uh, final little layer. And maybe this really beautiful bright blue here, which was collage, and I know I've run out of it, so I will make a note in my uh, thoughts, and those are where the thoughts, feelings, or, cat, or, or emotions, or just final things that you want to remember. Um, this beautiful light blue collage, um, pencil, china marker, so all of my layers, so I'll know, and I'll even write some additional notes, so that if I wanna do um, four more, Starting from the same part, starting from this point, and moving forward, it will have some unity. You know, that's that's the thing. I don't want it to be the same, but I want them to look like they're from the same the same series. So I hope um, you um, hop on my email list. I'm getting ready. I'm getting closer. I know it's been. I know it, I've been talking about it, but bear with me. Um, I want this to be to be good and um, get your self-reflection PDF, get your prompts, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.